Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. I got another cool musical gadget to unbox today. It's right here. And uh, it comes to me from Phonic Bloom in Ireland. So just had to make it across the pond to get here. And um, if that sounds familiar to you, if that name Phonic Bloom sounds familiar to you, I recently did a video about this little gadget right here that's called Glow. And I did an unboxing video of this and, and I had mentioned that they made a limited run and I happened to get one of them from the limited run. Super cool little gadget. Well, shortly after I did the unboxing video, I did another video where I used Glow to mic uh, some acoustic instruments and, and get some really cool sounds. And the internet is a funny old thing. The owner of the company saw that video and got a hold of me. Um, and from that video, then he found my unboxing video and he sent me a very nice uh, email, like a personal email about, you know, thank you for doing all that. Can I send you something to say thank you? And so he sent me this. Now, let me just disclose that here. I didn't request this. I didn't, I bought Glow over here. I didn't request this, but it was sent to me free um, because of, you know, the previous work that I've done. So, you know, if that matters to you, there it has been disclosed. But let's get this baby open. This is another one of their gadgets. They have several different gadgets, Phonic Bloom does. And this particular one is called the Mixtape. Okay, there we go. That was actually packaged, uh, taped pretty well. So here is our item. And this is called the Mixtape. And oh, isn't that cool? So let's get this open here. We've got a sticker. We've got a manual, get to that in a second. And then we've got this little like um, metal sort of tin here um, with the tape logo up here on the top. And let's go ahead and get that open. Okay, so there is our mixtape. And it looks like a cassette tape. It has a very um, similar aesthetic to a cassette tape. Let me kind of turn it around here so you can see all the different uh, angles here. So. It does indeed look similar to a cassette tape, but it is not a cassette tape and it doesn't really function like a cassette tape per se. It's actually a synthesizer. And inside of this thing, you can see, maybe you can see there's a microcontroller actually right here. There's a couple ICs, looks like some transistors down here, some resistors and diodes and capacitors. So like all the circuitry is right up here on the top. But you notice across the bottom where normally this would kind of stick out on a normal tape. These are keys right here. There's eight of them. And then you've got a key here and a key here. And then you have these two um, sort of encoders that are where the, uh, the spindles would be on the cassette, if it were a cassette. And so those things together is how you interact with this. And it's actually byte beat is what it calls if you, is what it's called if you're familiar with that. And byte beat is effectively, I don't wanna go into all the nuances, but effectively you write a very small line of code but in the way that it's written, it's able to produce a near endless variety of musical sounds and compositions and patterns. So this actually has eight different byte beat algorithms in it. And then it has all these different parameters that you can control within the algorithm. And you do that all by either using these eight buttons or these two like modifier buttons or the encoders to turn to um, basically communicate with the microcontroller. And when I watched the video the first time, I was a little bit confused. I was like, wait, what just happened? And I watched it again and it started to make more sense. And then I, watched, I read the whole manual. So I think I'm gonna be able to at least make sounds out of it, um, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna spend a good chunk of this video now just kind of exploring it and trying to make some sounds and seeing what we can do with the mixtape. Okay, so here we have our mixtape and let's go ahead and do a little demo. Now, real quick, let me just mention that I have the output cable here is going into the monitors, which are on either side of the camera. And you will hear my voice and the sound coming out of the monitors. That way I can kind of do voiceover. That's not gonna give you the greatest quality of the internal sounds, but I will probably do future videos where I actually do direct audio so you can hear it better. But for the sake of what I'm gonna do here, I think that's gonna work better. So you need two cables real quick. You need eighth inch mono. This is for the audio. So not an eighth inch stereo like a headphone. You want an eighth inch mono that goes in right here. And then you want a USB cable that's gonna provide the power. Now, USB is so confusing. So this is a micro USB type B cable. 
and that's what it looks like. I'll go ahead and put an overlay on the screen. But there are so many different USB cables on the market. That is the one you need for this particular um, interface. So let's go ahead and plug that in right here on the side. And we hear noises. So, um, again, I've seen some other demos. I've read the manual and such, and there is some good information out there about the mixtape. But I feel like none of them really gave me a great idea of the interface, so I'm gonna try to focus on that first. So basically, you've got these eight keys across the bottom, these two up here, and then these two encoders. So if you can hear now, this is a perfect example of one of the byte beat algorithms. So it sounds like it's kind of repeating, but you'll notice it's not, every once in a while it'll do kind of some different things. It's not just repeating. And if I hit a different key here, I'll get a different byte beat algorithm. And again, if you just let this one play for a little bit, it doesn't just repeat, it does some interesting little things in there. But now if I want it to repeat more often, what I can do is I can turn these knobs and I can change it. And so I, if I want something that repeats more, I can easily grab that or I can go back to something that's a little more random. Additionally, these lights up here indicate a lot of different things and it's not always obvious. So if you notice, if I hit like this key here, that one comes on to tell me I'm on the fourth key. If I hit the sixth key here, that one comes on and so on and so forth. Eighth key, okay. So that is telling me which key is active. Now, you also notice on all the keys, there's a little three letter um, code here. Now, if you wanna access any of those things, you just hit shift. So like for instance, if I want to access the delay, I hit shift and delay, and you can see that one blinks to tell me I'm now in the delay menu. So everything I do now will affect the delay. So for instance, there we can hear delay being applied, or I can change the delay different type of delay. It's almost more like a flanger. Well, that's more like a flanger there. So you can hear that if I want to bypass the delay, I can hit there, and now we're back to dry. If I want to go right back to delay, bam. So then when I'm done editing that parameter, I hit shift and I'm back out. So now if I wanted to adjust the arpeggiator, shift arp, and you can see that one sh starts blinking to show me that I'm in the arpeggiator. Now we hear a different pattern, or another different pattern. Then I hit shift and now I'm back to the main edit. So now I can still cycle through all these. And I can still change with these. So it gives you a lot of different ways that you can edit these different parameters. So I can save any patch that I come up with at any time. But additionally, I can also save the state of the whole device and then load from save states. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I push shift and hold it for a couple seconds, then I go into this. So this is telling me I am at bank one, and then these are my eight patches in bank one. If I turn this, I can go to bank two, bank three. You can see bank three only has two patches in it right now. Well, let's go back to bank one. If I hit this, I have now loaded bank one, patch two. And now all the settings have set according to that patch. Including effects and everything. And so now I can just kind of rhythmically touch these different pads start to get some really interesting patterns when I don't really have to know anything about the music other than whether or not I like it. And then if I say, hmm, I want to try something different, again, hold that for two seconds, and I can pick a different patch. So let's go to bank two, and let's choose patch four. And of course, I can still go back and change these. So 
Let's try a different setting. So again, shift for two seconds. I'm currently in bank two, patch four. Let's go, let's go up to bank three. Let's do bank three, patch one. So you can hear, oh, it just stopped. Does that mean there's nothing in this patch? No, it means that it doesn't just advance on its own, so I have to touch something. So you can hear, now I've got something going on. And not all your patches are glitchy and weird. This one's actually quite musical. Doing this on its own. So cool. Okay, so we've got this one here. It's kind of interesting. Let's see if we can edit the ARP on this one. There we go. Very different, huh? Let's try this one. Oh, that's the one I just chose. Try this one. go. Very, very different just by changing one parameter. Now again, let's go in there and edit the delay. Let's try this one. Maybe this one. There we go. There we go. So it's pretty easy to start building these things. Okay, so you can also edit the layers within here, okay? So if I go into my layer menu here, so remember shift, layer. Okay, you can see this one has two layers occupied. So I'm currently editing layer one. So if I go to layer two, all right, I'm now editing layer two. So I'm now editing a different thing than I was just a minute ago. So let's see if we can change the ARP on layer two. Hear that. Okay, so I started with a normal one here with one of the preloaded patch, and I just tweaked a few little things and listen to how much this evolves now. So it, again, it's not hard to take something very simple and turn it into something your own. If you're like a programmer and you really understand programming, you can go deep and get very exact on all these things. But if you just want to make some cool sounds by pushing some buttons, I think this is your box. It's the mixtape. Okay, so there you have it, folks. That was the mixtape from Phonic Bloom. Cool little device. Um, I'm not even sure exactly how you classify this. It's just kind of a self-contained um, synthesizer with a whole lot of editable parameters and a whole lot of combinations. I mean, to be honest, you could probably play an hour set with this thing, especially if you really took the time to learn all of it. When you get into the different layers and using the arpeggiators and the sequencers and stuff, you could build some pretty amazing soundscapes with this thing um, if you were to take the time to get all the way in there. So pretty neat. I love the fact that it has USB power so it's easy to power on. Um, and they do have an option where if you want, you can actually get a battery pack to put in it so that you aren't, you don't have to deal with the wire coming out and then you can literally use it mobile. And if you like what I do on this channel, please hit that subscribe button for me. And if you like this video or any of my videos, please, Give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon.